Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We have a lot to talk about today, so we're going to move at warp speed. Um, very cold weather to talk about. Hurricane uh, heading toward Mexico and remnants toward Texas. Uh, nor'easter potential this weekend. El Nino and what's it mean for our winter. We've been talking a lot about winter, but we'll recap that for the winter U.S. and we'll even look at Canada here this week. Uh, this week here, the, toward the last uh, few days of October here, the coldest in 13 years for the eastern half of the country. Uh, fourth coldest in 30 years for the eastern half of the country. So very cold here. If you're not expecting it to be this cold, this is pretty cold for this time of year. Uh, very warm in the Pacific Northwest. You can see this conveyor belt of moisture going across the south, the Gulf Coast, and then up the east coast. Uh, this will be remnants of a major hurricane that's going to hit Tex hit Mexico and the remnants into Texas. Uh, we have to watch the weekend here. A lot of the operational models do show the potential for a nor'easter. It will definitely be a rain event along the, the coastal cities, but in the very high elevations of the mountains of the northeast from Pennsylvania into New England, say above 1,500 feet, certainly can be looking at some heavy wet mountain snow on the back edge of this potential nor'easter um, toward the weekend. Overall for the U.S., we'd say it's the coldest in five years, seventh coldest of the past 30 years below average for the nation as a whole. And uh, a tad drier for the nation as a whole. It's a little bit underdone here, but um, 13th wettest in 30 years. So a near average for the nation as a whole, obviously wet in the south and the east. Looking at the, the last week of few days of October going into early November, uh, that pattern shifts a bit. We get very, very cold weather in the western half of the country, and you'll see a warm-up ahead of this uh, cold front sweeping across the country in early November. Uh, don't go too used to this warm-up. Uh, it will probably be a four or five day event of much warmer weather along the east coast. Again, that's just ahead of a very, very strong cold front. Um, you can see that kind of uh, right here with a very, very heavy rain out ahead of this front. So that front will definitely sweep across the entire east coast, uh, probably as we get into the second week of November. So again, enjoy the, the brief warm-up here coming for the east uh, in early November. Overall for this week, we'd say the U.S. is the coldest in seven years. That's the ninth coldest in 30 years. That's below average. Uh, U.S. would be the wettest in 30 if we have this huge conveyor belt of moisture ahead of this very strong cold front for early November. Uh, looking at the national trends here since fall started, meteorological fall started back on September 1st, uh, bars are temperatures trends above average, uh, blues below average, and these red line, blue lines are kind of the national uh, high and low temperatures. But we had a big, huge warm-up in mid-September, uh, then a cool down in late September, then we had a real big warm-up uh, again beginning of October, and then obviously since about October 10th, We've been very, very cold for much of the country. It'd be the coldest in nine years for the nation as a whole, fourth coldest in 30 years. So a really prolonged stretch here. In fact, this past Sunday was the coldest day of the season so far for the, for the country. Um, looking at snowfall here, snowfall is accumulated snowfall. Um, so if you're anywhere in these blue areas, uh, you've had some snow, uh, you know, wet snow uh, so far this season. So this would be the most in nine years. Uh, a little bit unusual to see this much snow Obviously, much, much of this has melted already, but this is just accumulated snowfall, how much you've had season to date. So uh, off to an early start and a sign of things to come. We are going to be watching uh, major uh, Hurricane Willa. It's a Category 4 here off Mexico. It's going to track and get sheared apart as it goes across the high elevations of Mexico, very high mountains in here. So it'll be shredded pretty quickly. So there won't be any uh, impacts due to wind in Texas, but certainly copious amounts of three, four, five more inches of rain here where they don't need it. Um, they've had probably 20, 30 inches of rain in Texas in the last 45 days. So they do not need any more rain. This system, the remnants will track across the Gulf Coast and then head up the East Coast. This could be, again, some of this moisture will become a, a nor'easter toward the weekend for the northeast part of the country. We've been talking about a long winter ahead and thought we'd give a little more insights into that. Um, some things you're going to hear is it's a central week El Nino. It's called the Motokai El Nino. If we look over here, we see actually the waters are still pretty cold below normal in the uh, toward South America and Mexico. So this area is just typically if we had a real strong El Nino, we'd see this whole area in orange and red, much above average water temperatures. And we don't. It's a weak El Nino. It's very important to, to caveat the, the strength of El Nino versus uh, what it can mean for the U.S. Another term you're probably going to hear this winter is the blob. Uh, I've already heard uh, some folks saying the blob is back. It's, again, a warmer than normal water condition that pops up every now and then. Um, so this happened a few years back, and we had some epically cold and snowy weather in the eastern half of the country. You heard the term polar vortex with the blob. Uh, so something to watch. Um, we overlay kind of the, the potential jet stream as a result of this pattern. You would see a kind of a dual jet stream. The subtropical jet stream brings moisture across the south. We're seeing that already. You're already seeing these hurricanes that have been flooding Texas and going across the Gulf Coast states. This is a, a classic weak El Nino uh, pattern. Uh, the blob will actually kind of create a ridge out here. So when you create a ridge here, you probably create a trough downstream. And so that's why we think the eastern half of the country 
has the potential to be very, very cold actually this winter. It may take a little while to develop, but once it gets cranking here, for sure, for sure January, February look to be epically cold, and we'll talk about why we think that even the polar vortex term could come back. Uh, Gulf Stream is very warm across the East Coast here, so where these two meet, these two jet streams meet, you can certainly have the potential for nor'easter. So this is a nor'easter type winter uh, that we're heading for, um, so this is just a sign of things to come. We would definitely be in a negative AO type pattern, which is just an Arctic oscillation. So what happens is the, the cold air in the Arctic may actually be quite warm uh, because that cold air will be displaced to the south, uh, both here in North America and, and less frequently probably in Europe. Uh, so again, just sign of things to come. We uh, look at the some of the NOAA products here. So here's where we are with El Nino. It's a weak event as we speak. Um, it's not the big strong events, and it's very important to caveat that. A very strong El Nino means something very different than a weak one. So again, nothing really suggests it's going to be any more than a weak, very borderline moderate El Nino at best. Again, central based. We say central based, we're looking kind of at the depth of the El Nino below the surface, and we can see that it's very, very warm waters uh, below the surface here in the central out toward the international date line. As you get closer to South America, you can see the subwater, subsurface water temperatures are actually near normal. So again, central based El Nino is generally the theme. If we were to lump all the historical tr trends, when you've had a very strong El Nino, yes, we'd be talking like, no, what a very warm winter. But we're not talking about a very strong El Nino. We're not even talking really about a moderate one. And if we were, generally cooler than normal. In fact, most of the country is kind of normal to cool in a moderate El Nino. In a weak El Nino, and especially a weak central-based El Nino like we're in, uh, typically very cold in the eastern half of the country and milder out west. Um, so again, we're kind of in this pattern. If that was the only index you looked at, and we looked at about 23 of them, this is only one. Uh, pretty high confidence that this is what we'll be looking at. Unfortunately, NOAA is out there talking about, just came out last week, with a really warm winter. We completely disagree. Uh, this blue line is our year ahead <coughs> forecast, <coughs> excuse me, versus their day ahead, month ahead forecast. Um, so the orange line's the uh, NOAA, the blue line's our year ahead forecast. So we, we beat them pretty handily 83% of the time. So I always say statistics is uh, sticks is math, climate cycles work a lot better than physics and analogs. So um, again, we're not buying into the, the warm winter from NOAA. As a recap, again, we've talked about this in previous YouTube videos here, but uh, generally cold east and uh, a little cooler in the west because of some rainfall and cloud cover, but uh, above average in the western between these ridge areas. So this will be a warmer than average, but colder than last year. So much of the country will be colder than average except for the Pacific Northwest. Where the two meet, uh, we certainly could be looking at some big ice storms in the deep south and obviously a conveyor belt of very heavy snowfall from Kansas to probably Pennsylvania here, Pencil Pennsylvania, New Jersey areas. So. Uh, exciting winter to say the least. In New England, well, depending on the nor'easter track, we may actually be uh, near average, not not quite as bad as, as last year. Uh, looking at Canada, again, so you see this warmer than average conditions across the, the Hudson Bay area. Uh, this is actually just probably displacing the polar vortex more toward the south, uh, more toward uh, you know the northern part of the United States. So we do think you're going to hear that term. For sure in February, uh, polar vortex may be a, a common theme you hear in the media. So again, pretty cool across where most people live in uh, Canada along the southern border. About I think about 80% of the population lives within 100 miles of the Canadian border. Pretty, uh, pretty cold for those folks. Um, snowfall, again, um, much heavier out here in Alberta, Saskatchewan areas. Typical uh, across the rest of uh, southern Canada. Um, Thought we'd end here with uh, the hype here on the on the lottery and just put your odds into perspective here. So if you think you're going to become a billionaire uh, from playing the the lottery here, you have about obviously a one in 229 292 million chance. Um, ironically, there are billionaires in this world. So if we go back and look at the the data down here, uh, odds of becoming a billionaire is about one in 750,000, uh, 785,000. So you can earn it uh, much easier than you can win it. Um, in terms of uh, weather-related events, injured by a hailstone, one in five million. Bad, uh, bad weather in Massachusetts, killing you would be one in 4.6 million. Dying from a lightning strike, one in three million. Um, so again, your odds are much greater uh, for so many things um, than it is at winning the lottery. But hey, God bless you if you win. Uh, remember your friends at Weather Trends. With that, folks, uh, have a great week. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's a uh, little bit longer um, YouTube video, and uh, we'll talk to you this time next week.